Edmonton Sports Leader, TSN 1260. Three forty-seven of the Sports Center, TSN 1260. How are you? Uh, we're into February, and uh, that's uh, time to uh, fire things back up for another edition of the uh, Race Report, brought to you by Cantork. They have uh, many new products and features, too many to list here in this live liner. Check out everything at Cantork. What they've been up to as uh, Colin Livingston uh, joins us once again. And uh, Colin, of course, there's, a, there, there's lots going on. Uh, F1. Well, there's still some ripple effects over uh, how the season ended in that race. Uh, Lewis Hamilton hasn't spoken. I've been reading online F1 fans. Like, I know that Europe loves the, a, a little bit of, like, soap opera stuff with their racing, but he hasn't said anything. Total Wolf throws a little gasoline on the fair. But, ah, geez, you know, uh, we're, we're both frustrated with F1. Hamilton's not going out like that. He'll be back, correct? I sure hope so. Um but at the same time, I could see if, if he wanted to walk away, um, you know, obviously, I mean, for, for, you know, to refresh everyone's memory, the, the way the, the last couple of laps unfolded, I mean, Hamilton really, you forget about the last two laps, the last five races, um, you know, it was, it was in Red Bull and, and, um, and Verstappen's hand and, and Lewis went on a, on a mad terror, um, you know, winning the last bunch of races, um, you know, closing the gap, going into the final race tied on points, um, and, and dominating the entire race from, you know, start to finish, except for when these, these controversial, uh, decisions were made. Um, you know, you don't have it won until it's won. Um, you know, I'm not one of these people that say Verstappen didn't deserve it. He, he won the race based on the decisions that were made. He is the champion. Um, you know, I was an advocate for, for a long time that, you know, really the only fair solution in that situation for, for the unprecedented nature of that season would have been to, to announce co-champions for the first time in history, because it really would have been the only way to make anything make sense based on what happened. You can't take it away from Verstappen because of the way the decisions came out and you really couldn't have taken away from Hamilton because, you know, the, the cars, if they were on equal tires, there was no question that Hamilton had the advantage. Um, but you know, things play out the way they play out. If, if he ends up walking away, I think it'll be absolutely, you know, devastating to F1, but F1 will recover. Um, you know, right now we also don't know, uh, the, the FIA has already announced, uh, their own internal investigation into how those decisions happened. Um, you know, the thought process, what, what needs to change, blah, 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 to the point that they've announced that the race director, Michael Massey might not be back this year. Now, while he was the guy that, that made the decisions, I don't really think he's the guy that's at fault because he didn't have a lot of support. And, and Michael Massey is not just sitting there watching the race. He's got a lot of other responsibilities during the weekend. And, and as we've mentioned before, he didn't have a lot of support. He didn't have support because the FIA didn't give him the assistance that he needed. So there's a lot of a lot of things to consider. I hope, um, I hope Massey's back. I hope that, that he gets his, the, the support he needs. I, I hope, um, the FIA really acknowledges the fact that, you know, that the, the way things unfolded, you know, the, the race director and, and the, you know, the, the officials should not be influencing the outcome of the race the way that they did. Um, and that, you know, we can kind of put this behind us. There's a lot of exciting stuff coming up with, with these new cars, with, uh, you know, new wheels, new tires, new, you know, wheel covers, new aerodynamics, new engines, new everything that, that hopefully is going to promote better racing this year. When you take a look at, uh, the, the next new issue for moving ahead to this year is the new car and engine packages. Uh, what, what, what can you know the fans expect from this in the short term and longer term this year the the biggest thing strutty is that you know the the engines are going to be a little bit different the way they deliver power is is mostly the the big thing um the aerodynamics of these cars is significantly altered this year so um basically the 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 philosophy of the build has changed the f1 cars up until last year 
generated their downforce, in, in essence, their grip from the wings of the car. So if the car was in open air, it was able to, you know, have maximum downforce. But when you started to follow another car, you'd lose your grip. So it didn't matter that you were faster. Um, the, the, the stat that, um, that was published, uh, earlier today is that when you got within 20 meters, you know, 60 feet of the car in front of you, you lost 35% of your downforce. When you got within 10 meters, you lost 46. So almost half of your aero grip, which is the majority of where the grip of the car comes from was gone. You would be faster, but as you're trying to turn, your car wouldn't stick. It would start sliding around. So it made it really hard to overtake. What they're doing this year is they're taking away the, the wing, a lot of the wing downforce um, and creating ground effect downforce. So the car, instead of being pushed down, if this makes sense, um, I'm going to explain it the best way I can. So instead of being pushed down from the wings, kind of the opposite of what an airplane would do, it's going to be sucked down from the under tray. So the, the under tray basically is going to create a vacuum. When the car go, gets up to speed, it's going to pull it down. And that's where the majority of the grip is going to come from. So what they're saying now is at 20 meters, you're only going to lose 4% of your downforce. And at 10 meters, you're going to lose 18% of your downforce. So it's going to make it a lot easier for cars to follow. It's going to make it a lot easier for them to overtake, especially if you're, if you're quicker. Um, but there's a, there's a slew of other changes that are going to be coming to the cars that, um, you know, with the bigger tires, that's going to help, help them not overheat. It's going to help keep the, the tires cooler for a run. They've got, um, you know, wheel covers for the first time. So it's going to help them be a little bit more slippery. Like it's going to have less drag in, in the air than, than what they had before. And, and hopefully this is, this is going to show more driver talent because the cars are going to be more evenly matched. The, the big teams are still going to be the big teams, but they have a maximum that they can spend. So you can't, you can't do it all through technology and your driver is going to have a bigger, um, you know, a bigger role in all these things. Colin Livingston joins us from the Cantorque Racing Report. Uh, Colin, I'm always kind of interested to see, you know, off season changes, decisions. Uh, NASCAR seems to be, you know, trying to change a little bit who they are. Now I know it's an exhibition event, but uh, you know, they've, they're, they're starting, they're going to, they've converted LA Memorial Coliseum. They paved the track and it's a, it's a quarter mile track. And for any of our listeners who have been out to a task with, that's basically the same. They're going to have 23 cars on the track during the final shootout. What's the purpose of this? Where do you think they're trying to go from here? I, I got to look at this from two different standpoints. I mean, from, from the, the fan perspective, they're going to be able to put up to 50,000 people in LA Memorial Coliseum. Um, you know, which is located right in the heart of Los Angeles compared to when they, they head out to, uh, auto club speedway, which is in Fontana. That's, um, almost 50 miles, um, oh, pardon me, almost 60 miles, something like that from, from downtown LA. Um, so it's to, to try and attract actual Los Angeles traffic is it's difficult to get people out there. That's kind of what they're trying to do is showcase NASCAR in, you know, one of the biggest markets in the States. But, you know, this is a trend from NASCAR here the last couple of years that they keep trying to turn things into things that aren't things. You know, L.A. County, oh, L.A. Memorial Coliseum is a sprinting track and basically a football field. There's no banking. There's no garages. There's no infrastructure but they're going to turn it into a short track. And again, you know, I love Wetaskiwin. We put on really good races out there all year long in modifieds and late models in the, the trucks that come out there. We're going to be back out in NASCAR Pinties. Our cars for Pinties are probably a little bit on the big side for the amount of power that they have. You know, you're really, really, really working when you're out, you know, on a quarter mile track for a sprint cup car, a monster energy cup car that has 400 horsepower more. Um, and these, you know, it's going to be a full field. So, you know, they're going to be running in smaller packs and in smaller sessions and it's an exhibition race. Um, I don't know. I, I just, I don't understand what NASCAR's mentality is to keep trying, like, you know, to pave the inside of that track is not cheap. 
and they're going to have to remove it when they're done. So, you know, they, they turned one of their best racetracks at Bristol Motor Speedway into a dirt track and they turned, you know, stock cars into dirt cars, which to me, it, it's, it's a disaster. You know, dirt racing is so awesome and there's so many great dirt tracks and so many great dirt racers. If you want to watch dirt, you can do that. I don't, I don't know. I, I it really seems like bully mentality that, you know, they're trying to be everywhere and, you know, they're going to just steamroll their way through everything. I hope the, the, the event is, is, is solid. Um, I hope it's well attended. It seems like there's a lot of tickets sold. So I'm guessing that the ticket prices weren't that high for this event. Um, but, uh, if nothing else, uh, you know, last weekend we got the Rolex 24 broadcast. So, you know, got to see a little bit of racing and, and we get to see a little bit more this weekend. Well, it's going to be interesting to watch and we'll definitely follow the uh, Hamilton story. Uh, looking forward to another season of our uh, racing, getting going, uh, call. Uh, we'll talk to you next Thursday. Have a good week. Thanks a lot, boys. Call and listen to the racing report.